Well, greetings and welcome to our devotion time. We've been looking at Noah. Noah has gathered his family in the ark. The animals have been gathered by God. God has sealed up the ark. The flood waters are rising from the ground and falling from the earth, uh, from the sky as well. And the ark is releasing its moorings from the ground and is beginning its, its floating time. When we've left Noah and his family and this stunned uh, uh, event, this crisis that they're in, we've talked about this, that they're no longer living in a life as normal mode, uh, an entertainment way, lifestyle, what are we going to eat this what are we going to go out and eat tonight? Or that, that kind of mentality, it's survival mode. And um, as we've, we've looked at that, I think we've been invited to uh, test our relationship with God in, in uh, maybe a circumstance like that as well. And that's what I want us to keep in mind today as we continue to look at Noah's story, looking beyond all of our religious status quo to a world where it is potentially just us and God. And the situation described in, in these studies that we've been looking at, in, in a, a matter of a few moments, um, our life can can um, be turned upside down as well. Maybe we would just substitute the, the word flood with a, a fiery explosion, a pandemic, uh, an earthquake, a hurricane, a tsunami, radiation, uh, fallout, um, whatever it may be. Uh, so we, we don't want to succumb to this temptation that when we read Noah's story, that it, it's mere history or it's literature for us. Uh, what I'm saying is we, we don't want to read this in an entertainment mode. We want to uh, maybe read this as a manual for our life uh, because uh, things could get very real for us uh, in, in, uh, in our relationship with God and just in moments. And, and I want us to crawl up into our Father's arms and tell Him we, we love Him no matter what goes on around us and, and allow Him to whisper in our ears uh, the things that we need to know and instruct us in the things that we need to do. And, and um, I guess just a sense, pause and relax in, in His caring arms and, and try to listen carefully to uh, to the the, um, the beat of the things going on around us. Maybe it, it is uh, a crisis moment where the rains are beating down in, in some form or, or another. Uh, scripture doesn't tell us what it felt like for Noah and his family to lose touch with land and and to know they, they, that they are totally in, in the Lord's hands. The ark had no steering mechanism, if you uh, notice that it doesn't have a, ru a rudder, it doesn't have a sail. There was no way for a human being on board to control either the direction or the speed that the ark would go in. They were totally in God's care. Uh, they had no idea when they uh, um, would see land again or where on earth they would be when they finally saw land. They, they could only imagine what was happening to their neighbors to the cities of the earth, uh, to the plants and the animal life with which they, they were very familiar, to the, the mountains that were off in the distance in their land uh, that, that once made up their horizon. Everything they had known is completely changed. And, and again, we don't know what was going on in their mind, but scripture tells us this. There was a flood on the earth for 40 days. The waters increased, lifting the ark. And it rose from on ground. The water surged and increased very much on the earth. And the ark began to drift on the surface of the water. And all Noah and his family would know for the next 150 days, that's five long months, was water. As far as their eyes could see in every direction was water. Uh, the scriptures tell us the waters on the earth surged upward, higher and higher. And all the high mountains under the heavens were covered. The waters had surged upward 15 cubics, and all the mountains were covered. And this is Genesis 7, 19 through 20, if you're curious. And with the rising of the water came uh, Noah and his family. Uh, it came to this realization that, um, that some things were going on beneath them in the water, just out of their sight. 
And, and again, scriptures kind of describes that for us in verses 21 through 25 of chapter 7. All the flesh that walked on the earth perished, birds, livestock, wild beasts, and every lower animal that swarmed on the land, as well as every human being, all in whose nostrils was breath, of the spirit of life of all that was on dry land died everything living every living thing was destroyed that was on the surface of the ground including man cattle creeping things and birds of the sky they were destroyed from the earth only noah was left and those who were with him in the in the ark the water prevailed on the earth 150 days and again that's genesis 7 21 through 25 and so there's no more cackling of the evil one uh, and there, there, there's temporary silence is uh, what, what we've come to uh, the, the earth is totally immersed and is cleansed and we'll talk more about this idea of cleansing next time we're together well you have a great week and i hope to see you wednesday with our bible study and uh, again back here friday as we continue our devotion and continue looking at noah's life God bless and peace be with you.